Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look in a bit more detail about what's happening when you draw gradients. So and this includes, of course, gradient maps and standard gradients. We're going to start here with this box here, just a rectangle, and we're going to draw a gradient on it across from one end to the other. And let's make one end of it red by just bringing down the green and the blue the other end of it just green. So we've got a red to green gradient. The first thing we can notice about this is that there's almost like three zones here. Up here it's just pretty red and down green there. But we get in the middle and you get kind of a... you can't get ready green but you get sort of a mix and it's a bit... almost a bit muddy and this can cause problems the middle area and if we look at this we can see a bit more of what's going on if we start with the graph here so we've got a graph here 0 to 100 percent here which is the brightness of the pixel and across here is the horizontal position as in here so if we bring in the red line it starts at red over here and then just goes straight down across the gradient However, actually, if you look at it, red seems to disappear sometime after the middle here. Because if I do the green line, then it's the opposite direction. And what happens is when the dominant colour, the highest value colour, is so far above the other colour, then it will effectively obliterate it. it, is, it is, the eye will just pick up this and miss this. So it looks like here there is going to be just red. But there's green in there as well. You can take the pipette here, drag it down, and you can see that in here there is green as well as red, and over here there is red as well as green. The blue is just going to be, at the moment, a straight line across the bottom. However, if we start moving this around a little bit, we're going to get some interesting effect because we're going to look at this central point in particular. At the moment, the reason you're getting this kind of muddy bit is because you've got red and green the same. No one is dominant. So you get no one colour, so you get this uncertainty in the middle. So if I take the blue line here, and if I drag this up here to here, and to make that realistic, let's take the green and turn that to an add blend. So it blends those lines together and you get cyan. And so you can do the same here. So if I go to the gradient and go to this end here and make that cyan by bringing up the blue on the right hand side, we get another phenomenon here, which if you look into the middle here, this is grey. It's actually grey, and the reason it's grey is because red, green and blue at this middle point are all equal. So when red, green and blue are all the same, you get a monochrome, it's a black, white or a grey. And this is at 128, which is the 50% mark. So here you've got grey. So this provides some sort of interesting thing. We can sort of say, what's going on here again? Let's try pulling this off a bit. So if I go again to the blue line here and bring this down to halfway here, we can see what happens here by going to the gradient here, go to this end here and bring the blue down to halfway here. And what you see now is the middle has gone right off grey. In fact, it's gone more towards that middle olive colour and that's because the difference between the green and the blue is big enough that you know even here it's big enough that it it is these two colours here just dominate the blue so the blue doesn't have to go far down it's only halfway up but because these are twice as much they dominate it can be useful when you've got grey in the middle so if I go to a picture here and then just draw a gradient across this. I'll put a rectangle in here and then draw a gradient 
here, go to site type there, make it linear, and draw from one end to the other. And we'll make the bottom one kind of green. And the top one, because where the sky is, let's make that blue. Like that, make that teal, which is red, low, then green in the middle, and blue high. So we've got this colour here. Then if we blend this in with an overlay blend, or one of the contrast blend modes, we'll do overlay just for the exaggeration of the effect. And what you get is that grey area in the middle. Grey is transparent on the contrast blend mode. And so you get a, the effect here is not so clear. So particularly if we to bring down the opacity here, we can now just enhance the green here on a gradient and also on a gradient up there into the sky. And the middle bit is pretty much unaffected. So that's kind of a useful thing with it. So another thing you can do here is when you get crossover points, as we've seen, you get kind of muddy middles. And you're going to get this if we're going down here. But what if you start playing around with different things? So what if I took this here and I'll take the green and say bring this down here and bring this and up a little bit here, and I take the red line, and I bring this down here, say, and bring this up. In other words, I create a situation with non-overlapping lines here. And then we'll do that with a gradient here. And for the left-hand side, we start off with blue zero, Green is a little bit above zero, and red is a little bit off the top. And then on the other end, we've got blue halfway down. Green is a bit over the three-quarter mark, and red is a little bit more above that. So what we've got in here is because these lines are now non-crossing, you get very close colours, you get adjacent colours on the colour wheel. So now we're going from red across to yellow here. And you'll notice here that you've got no middle worry position. And that's what you get when you get a non-overlap. But if you took this, took this point, for example, and brought the red, say, down a bit, then what you're going to start to get is that middle muddy bit, because you brought the red down now below the green, and when you do that, then you get a crossover point. And when you get the crossover point, you can literally look down from that and look, here's a kind of a muddier area. So there you go. Some of the things to think about when you're using RGB in gradients and how you can control and understand what exactly is going on. So thank you very much for watching.